The reason I'm saying Kirk Herbstreit has lost his absolute mind is because he never has bad takes. He never just says stuff for attention or clicks and views. He only says stuff he actually means. I read that late last night and when I did, I was like, wait, what? Let me read it again. And then I read it again and again and again, just to make sure what I read, it was correct. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this a typo? I genuinely thought it was a typo or something. I didn't believe it. Of all the commentators and analysts in the college football world, the one I've come to like the most ever since I was a kid was Kirk Herbstreit. There's just always been something about him that's drawn me in. In my humble opinion, he's been the most consistent and most likable guy over the past 15-20 years. He is as unbiased as it gets and he always has pretty good takes. Very rarely, if ever, have I sat there listening to Kirk Herbstreit talk and go, Oh, no, 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 Kirk Herbstreit, what are you talking about? No, that's a stupid take. I don't know if I've ever said that. He's a very reasonable guy and by far one of the best analysts and commentators in the entire world. But very recently, yesterday to be more specific, Kirk Herbstreit had one of the worst takes and said one of the stupidest things I've ever seen. And I'm just gonna come out and say it. I think Kirk Herbstreit has lost his absolute mind. I listened to what he said a couple of times. I even read over it a couple of times just trying to rationalize it. But no matter how I chop this up, no matter how I break it down, there's no way you can justify it. We're going to talk all about that in today's video. It's a beautiful Saturday. You're not going to want to miss that. But also, we got to take a look at this other controversy involving the SEC, and more particularly, Georgia and Kirby Smart. As we all know, over the past couple of days, there's been a lot of drama going on in the SEC, and Kirby Smart, he just gave us a valid point. We definitely got an intriguing one for your Saturday. Hope you guys are having a great start to your summer. All right, Matt, blow a buster crap up. Now, without further ado, let's get it. What has the talk of the town been the past couple of days, at least on our channel? The SEC, are they going to eight games, nine games? They finally announced, hey, we're going to eight game conference schedule. And everybody, they're talking about it nonstop saying, oh, the SEC doesn't play anybody and blah, 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 blah. Some people think it's a weak move. Like I said, we've talked about that enough. Go watch some of the previous videos. Well, last night, Hunter, thank you for sending this to me, by the way, tagged me in this on Instagram, and I thought it was a great perspective. Here's what Kirby Smart has to say about all of this. Quote, unquote, a better topic for me is somebody going to get an advantage by not going to the SEC championship game, but making the extended playoff. That's a lot better topic to me than eight or nine games. Yet again, Kirby Smart said that. At first glance, when I read that, I was like, wait, what is he talking about? And this comment right here from Doghouse Central, it explains it the best. So, for example, Bama this year would have gotten a bye in the playoff while Georgia and LSU played for a spot in the playoffs. If that's the case, I'm not wanting to make the conference game. That is a great argument and a great discussion to have. Because think about it, in the year that just happened, 2022, if we was already in the 18 playoff, well, Alabama, at number five, not making the conference championship game, they would have got in. Why is Kirby Smart bickering about that? Because Alabama, essentially, they have a bye before the playoff even starts, while LSU and Georgia, they're battling it out. That is Kirby Smart's whole point of perspective, and I agree. Why would you want to play in the SEC championship game? I'd rather be Alabama sitting at home watching on the couch getting prepared. Because look at it from this perspective. You could say, oh, Matt, well, Georgia could lose and they'd still get in. But think about it from LSU's side. LSU wins the SEC West. They're ranked higher than Bama. And they go play Georgia and they lose and they don't make the playoff. But Bama gets in. Bama didn't beat LSU. Bama didn't even win the division. But they still get in over LSU. It's a great conversation and debate. My only way to solve this is you got to look at it like this. Even if LSU loses to Georgia, you got to put them in over Bama. Because how are we going to penalize LSU for making the SEC championship game? Meanwhile, Alabama, they're sitting at home. The only way to solve that, at least in my humble opinion, is the people on the college football committee, they can't penalize teams for making the championship games. They can't. If LSU goes to the SEC championship and they get mauled by Georgia, they still got to make the playoff. And to be honest, I am sick and tired of this whole thing. It's been going on for years. It will continue to go on where we don't actually do the rankings the right way. What I mean by that, and this is really a different conversation for a different day, I don't understand how you can justify de-ranking LSU or Tennessee for losing to Georgia when Georgia is by far the best team in the country. That never makes sense to me. Like, for example, you'll have a top 10 matchup, right? For example, week one, LSU and Florida State are playing a top 10 matchup, right? Well, you know what's going to happen. Whoever loses that game, they're going to drop in the rankings, but that doesn't make sense to me. Let's say that Florida State's ranked six in the preseason poll and LSU's ranked eighth. Well, if LSU loses to Florida State, who is ranked higher than them, why should they fall? Y'all believe Florida State's one of the best teams in the country, so why should LSU fall? after losing to them. The way the AP poll rankings, which really don't matter, but all the rankings in general we do nowadays in basketball, football, baseball, it's stupid. 
it's just like we look at it and go, oh, yeah, well, this team lost. We got to drop them because that's just the right thing to do. It shouldn't be that way. If a team loses, you shouldn't automatically go, oh, yeah, well, I guess we got to drop them. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I really do. But we got to get a move on to the main topic, the main encore, the main reason you clicked onto this video. We got to talk about what Kirk Herbstreit just said. I'm just going to jump straight into things. Kirk Herbstreit said he likes Alabama and LSU over Georgia in the SEC going into the 2023 season. I read that late last night, and when I did, I was like, wait, what? Let me read it again. And then I read it again and again and again just to make sure what I read it was correct I was like wait a minute wait a minute is this a typo I genuinely thought it was a typo or something I didn't believe it but no come to find out Kirk Herbstreit said quote unquote I would have Bama and LSU just a little bit ahead of Georgia as we get into those summer months uh what Kirk Herbstreit genuine question are you okay in the head my friend you mean to tell me at this current moment in time you take bama and lsu over georgia to me coming out of the spring georgia has looked two times better than bama and lsu i'm going to show you his entire quote to give you more context in just a second but here's my take on this and i tried to come up with reasons as to how i could justify it but i couldn't what about bama or lsu in this offseason leading up to this point has told you or even given you a single hint that they're better than Georgia. To me, there's nothing. Georgia is better on offense and defense than LSU and Alabama at this current moment. LSU is not some offensive monstrous powerhouse. I like Jaden Daniels. I think he's underrated. I said that last year, but they're not going to score 40 points per game. We all know LSU is going to score around 34, 38 points per game. And the reason I take Georgia's offense over Alabama's right now is because Georgia has a quarterback. Alabama doesn't know what they're going to do. And that's the most important part about all of this. So I can't sit up here and even try to argue that Alabama's offense is going to be slightly better than Georgia's because at this point in time, I don't believe that. I'm not saying LSU and Alabama are going to be bad next year. I think they're going to have great years. I think they're going to shock some people. But right now, no, I'm taking Georgia. And I don't even think it's that hard of a decision. You had to tell me right now, yo, Matt, you got to bet your house. Who you picking? Georgia, Alabama, and LSU. At this current moment of time, off of what we've seen in spring practices, I'm taking Georgia. Here's my question to you guys. Fill me in the comment section. Why would you pick Bama and LSU over Georgia? Why? I don't think a lot of you would, but if you would, why would you? Let me show you this entire quote. Here's what Kirk Herbstreit had to say. If you're going to Vegas, that'd be a team I wouldn't want to question. He's referring to Alabama, by the way. Whenever they have a few losses or whenever they don't quite chase their goals the previous year and whenever, oh, they've got a new this and new that. It's like, oh boy, Nick Saban's in trouble. I'm telling you, he's got the same energy that he's had since 2009 when he won his first title against Texas. He's got great players like he had in 09, maybe better. He's got a great team that's going to be upset with a chip on their shoulder. As we sit May 31st, it's hard for me not to lean towards Alabama and the SEC. That's what he had to say about Alabama. Yet again, I think Alabama's going to have a great year. I think they're underrated, but I don't see how you could argue and say right now you're taking them over Georgia. That is just me, though. Here's what he had to say about LSU. Now you've got LSU, who made incredible strides in their first year with Brian Kelly. You've got a lot coming back from that team and beat Bama last year. They've got to go to Tuscaloosa. So those three, Georgia, Alabama, and LSU, are going to be everybody's three. As we sit here right now, I'm going to wait and see where we are in August, but I would have Bama and LSU just a little bit ahead of Georgia as we get into these summer months. Or he said those summer months, my bad, but you get the point. The reason I'm saying Kirk Herbstreit has lost his absolute mind is because he never has bad takes. He never just says stuff for attention or clicks and views. He only says stuff he actually means. I don't know if I've ever disagreed more with Kirk Herbstreit on anything than this right here. I don't get it. I don't know what he sees in Alabama and LSU, but hey, that's his opinion. He's entitled to that. I am extremely curious. Let me know your thoughts down below, but uh, roll with me.